So I wanted to do a review on this calculator just to kind of talk about the features and what I like about it. Uh, first of all, why review a calculator that is almost 30 years old and that is difficult to get? It runs somewhere around $200 currently on eBay. Well, because at least for me, I think this is one of the best calculators that were made for an engineer. A lot of calculators today seem to be designed around uh, school or exams. For example, the FE, Fundamentals of Engineering, or the PE, uh, the Pro Professional Engineering Exam. They seem to be, maybe it's just the market, maybe that's who buys calculators, maybe most engineers use computers. But I still like to have a, a nice physical calculator with physical buttons uh, so I can key in just a quick calculation. If I'm going to do anything really complicated, a program or spreadsheet sort of thing, I'm not going to enter it into a matrix. I'm going to use MATLAB or Excel or something else to do that. But for just a, a quick calculation, I still really like a nice calculator. So just briefly, um, I'm somewhat ambivalent toward uh, reverse Polish notation, RPN. I admire that you can enter and calculate certain things quicker, but I do feel like it has its downsides as well. For example, you can't really see what you've calculated. You get the intermediate steps, but you can't go back and edit what you entered. So if you want to just tweak a number, <clears throat> then you'd be better off writing a program or something or putting this into a, a function so that then you can tweak that number. And that takes a little bit longer on the RPN calculator, at least in my opinion. But yeah, so this calculator, um, I really like the simplicity of it. You know, it doesn't have as many buttons as some of the other calculators. It doesn't have as many shift keys as some of the other calculators. But what it has, it utilizes very well. So the shift key here takes you to all of these orange functions. So you got just your, your basic calculations up here, some of your uh, trigonometric functions here. You can shift, enter in a complex number, five, enter 10, shift to complex. All right, now I'm in polar mode, so it gave me the um, angle in polar. The ability to quickly shift between modes, I mean, that's, that's all pretty necessary on a calculator. But in addition, it has some other functions like being able to enter a matrix. So I can enter in a three by three matrix here and then edit it and enter in the, the values into that matrix, matrices or in the matrices that I can create. I've also can take the determinant inverse, the, I can transpose the matrix. I can solve simultaneous equations and not just two or three like most calculators, the TI-36X Pro or the uh, HP-35S. Most calculators, if they do simultaneous equations, will only let you do uh, <clears throat> two equations, two unknowns, or three equations, three unknowns. Here I could do, I don't know, See, an 8 by 8 matrix is created, and I can enter in my values there. I can do 8 equations, 8 unknowns. The menu system I really like. So once you get used to it, all of these keys up here are your soft keys. So right now, if I hit that, it will not do the square root of x. It'll actually take the determinant, which I don't actually have a matrix there right now, so it won't. Uh, and these arrows here show that I have more menus that I can scroll down through. So I can scroll down to the next menu. These are some vector operations, dot, cross, unit vector, um, some index functions, uh, storing i and j indices. So it's got a lot of functionality embedded within those menus. And almost all the menus are designed so that, you know, I go here, I can either go up a menu or down a menu. So they're not ones that you scroll and scroll and scroll through until you 
finally get to what you want. <clears throat> so everything is very easily and quickly accessible, everything that I think you'd need. Base conversions, so I can enter in a number here and quickly convert that to a different base. I can enter in a decimal or a binary number and convert that to decimal. So quick conversions. Um, the convert menu, there's not much here. You know, basically just your degrees to radians, uh, or to, to, from radians to degrees, degrees to radians, and then your decimal, hour, minute, second, um, your regular hour, minute, second format, and those can be used for uh, coordinates like degrees, minutes, seconds. Rectangular to polar conversion. So that that's pretty simple, but then on the other hand, you can program your own conversion. So from the mechanical engineering manual, I entered in these equations here. Length. So you enter in your value, say, oh, 10,000 meters. So it shows me 10,000 meters, and I want to convert that to nautical miles. I use a lot of nautical miles in, in my work in radar, so I put in the nautical mile function. So convert that to nautical miles, or just regular miles, or feet. So you can put in programs like this fairly quickly, fairly easily. It's intuitive, fast, and then you get a lot of functionality out of it. I did another uh, one, again based off the mechanical engineering manual, that does temperature conversions. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit, that's zero degrees Celsius or 491 Rankin, Kelvin. <clears throat> so just, you have a lot of expandability. Quadratic function, because this does have a solver, but it's a little tricky sometimes getting the roots, so put in a quadratic uh, function. Because it's programmable, you can put in what you want and then use this custom menu to assign what you want. So if I'm going to be using that length program all the time, maybe I want to go to my programs and put in length and assign it to my custom menu. Now I can use that whenever I want. Or if I'm going to do um, rectangular to polar conversions all the time, I can I should have gone the other way. Polar, put that on my menu. And this menu here, I can keep up so I can go 45, 5, convert that to polar. Or put in the rectangular function on a different button and I can keep this custom menu up and then do my, my common calculations using that custom menu if I want to. So it, it's very, uh, very customizable, very useful sort of functions. It's got a lot of stuff in this catalog. You know, there's there's a whole bunch of different functions that you could put into your custom menu, but not everybody's going to use all these functions. So you can customize it to be what you want it to be. I, I just, I really like that. At first I thought, you know, it'd be nice to have another shift key, but the more I use it, the more I realize, you know, I don't really need that other shift key, and sometimes it just clutters things up and makes it more difficult to find it. So I like this menu system. Almost everything is really well designed so that your common things will be right here where you need them, right when you open up the menu for your programming stuff. This is, these are the, the keys that I use most when I'm doing my, my programming. So, like I said, I, I think there was a lot of thought that went into this calculator. It is a, it is a masterpiece of design. It really is. And especially when it came out, you know, it had, because you can, you can turn on and off the dot matrix display here, you could do your own plot. It was slow, but you could do your own plot on this screen if you wanted to. And it has an infrared port that you could print to a, um, it's almost like receipt paper. You know, print, you could plot things, you could print your calculations. It just was a, a really impressive calculator, and today, even 30 years later, still very impressive, very, very useful. So this, I think, will be my my working calculator for now, and I'm I'm very much looking forward to uh, using the Swiss Micros, the DM42 that they plan on coming out with, and I've got the Free 42 
uh, app on my iPhone and I do use that regularly. It's nice on that one that you can actually save, export your files and import uh, new programs, export your programs. So despite being 30 years old, I think its availability for an older calculator is actually pretty good and it's actually still quite relevant. In fact, now that, you know, computers have pretty much taken over the functionality of graphing calculators, I don't really use a graphing calculator for much. I'm going to pick up a nice scientific calculator and do a quick calculation. So I, I really do think a calculator like this has a, a nice niche today. Even though it's not approved on exams that I know of, and even though it's not uh, really uh, cheap, I, I really do think this is a quality good calculator that that uh, I really enjoy using.